So today, I'm going to show you the video I made for an English project. Fair warning, the images may be a little graphic. I don't think it's anything too bad, but just so you know. And, because this was an actual research project, I have all the sources I used in the description below. So you can check those if you want to. But, nevertheless, here it is. For my project, I analyzed whether or not we should use the results of unethical human experiments. I define an unethical experiment to be an experiment done on humans that either neglects to gain consent of the subjects, causes physical harm to the subjects, or both. These experiments happened. Nothing we can do can change that. Luckily, these type of experiments aren't super common. However, that also means the data they provide is probably rare. For example, in what are known as the Nazi freezing experiments, several prisoners were pretty much just dropped into freezing water until they died, while Nazi scientists recorded what happened. According to Jonathan Steinberg, the quote-unquote lucky ones were taken out so reheating attempts could be made. Now this is a horrible thing to do, not arguing that. However, according to Barack Cohen, since a better knowledge of survival in cold water has direct and immediate practical benefits, Pozos and Hayward see it criminal not to use the available data. Pozos and Hayward being two scientists researching hypothermia. Interestingly, the Nazis did find that active rewarming seems to be the best way of helping hypothermia victims, as opposed to the much slower passive rewarming techniques currently in place. Pozos thus wants to use the Nazi results to look more into this. There were also a series of experiments conducted in Guatemala where scientists gave, or at least tried to give, several prisoners slash mental patients syphilis in order to study possible ways to cure the disease. This experiment was pioneered by a man named John Cutler, and, as Susan Reverby puts it, his work helped refine serological testing and suggested a better chemical prophylaxis. This pretty much means Cutler figured out a couple new ways to prevent syphilis. Both of these experiments were quite obviously unethical. People were brought in without consent, and physical harm was inflicted upon them. However, they provided useful data. Data that can either save, or at least significantly improve the quality of, human lives. If you're concerned that I'm just cherry-picking perfect examples, I'd like to point out that while these experiments are uncommon, especially compared to the normal ethical ones, they still have occurred throughout history. There were of course the Nazi experiments that I've already mentioned, however not all unethical experiments were done by extremist groups. For example, the Guatemala experiment that occurred in the 40s, the one that I mentioned, was actually facilitated by the US. In fact, the US has done a few unethical experiments including another syphilis study involving residents of Tuskegee, Alabama, done from the 30s to the 70s, a hepatitis experiment performed on children at the Willowbrook State School in New York, conducted in the 50s, and recently, in 2006, the CDC made ethically questionable recommendations involving testing for HIV. If we think about this logically, unethical experiments must provide some use, or else why would they continue to occur? So, in lieu of stopping these experiments in the first place, we might as well get some benefits from them. On the other hand, people against using data might argue that the reason these experiments continue to occur is because the data is used. To explain this, I need to bring an Aaron Ridley's example of the ideal experimenter. Such an experimenter is fully utilitarian, meaning that they measure the value of an experiment based on its net benefit to society. So the experiment might cause great harm and even death to thousands of people, but if it saves millions from the same fate, that a perfectly utilitarian experimenter will conduct this experiment. Attempts to regulate the experimenter don't work because, as Ridley put it, the ideal experimenter will regard any non-utilitarian regulation as essentially a nuisance which he will have to take into account when he does his cost-benefit analysis. In short, the only way to stop a utilitarian experimenter using non-utilitarian methods is to impose sufficiently harsh regulations such that the experiment no longer causes a net gain to humanity. At a certain point, these regulations become impractical, if not impossible. Therefore, Ridley really suggests that the ideal experimenter be brought to believe that any experimental result obtained in contravention of non-utilitarian standards will not be used to benefit anybody. In normal language, the only way to stop this ideal experimenter is to not use the results of unethical experiments. As a counterargument, no actually perfect utilitarian experimenter exists. The closest we can ever get is an approximation, so sufficiently strict regulations should suffice. However, there may be experiments that are close enough approximation to utilitarian that current regulations aren't enough. Of course, then there's the question of how close of an approximation are they, and do they justify along the use of unethical experiment data that could potentially save lives? 
This becomes a complicated series of questions, each that beg discussion. Aside from the ethically complicated ideal experimenter example, there are other arguments against using the data. The most common of these is that, in the case of the Nazis, the scientists may not have been qualified to perform the experiments, or using the data can be seen as validation of the experiments. There is some truth to the former. As Cohen points out, Raschke was under strict orders by Himmler himself to produce hypothermia results, or else. Raschke and Himmler being Nazi scientists. Of course, if you ever forced to get results, you'll probably cheat a bit to get what your boss wants. However, just because the data might be inaccurate doesn't mean it doesn't deserve analysis. We should look through the results to see if they are in fact worthless, rather than just assuming they are. The latter doesn't hold up as well. It's pretty much universally agreed that the Nazis were the bad guys. Using the data from the Nazi experiments shouldn't validate the experiments any more than building a nuclear reactor validates the Manhattan Project and the subsequent bombings on Japan. Besides, the current plan regarding any use of the data from the Nazi experiments is that the scientists specifically state in their paper that they do not condone the methods of the Nazis. This should cover any concerns about validating the experiments. There is, of course, middle ground here. It isn't just using all of the data or none of it. For example, you could use the results, but only of those that try to be ethical. In this case, unnecessary human suffering may result, but the subjects provided consent beforehand. This is the case of the Willowbrook hepatitis experiment that I mentioned earlier. So while they did experiment on children, they first obtained consent from the parents to make sure it was okay. It is also worth noting that there was already a hepatitis A outbreak at the school, so it is highly likely that all the kids would get hepatitis anyways. The experimenters were simply taking advantage of an unfortunate situation. This is a good example of an experiment that tries to be as ethical as it can, while still getting useful data. The experiment did, after all, find that the vaccine can be produced from the blood of immune subjects. We could go a bit farther and say that we can only use the results of experiments that have absolutely no other alternative. So, while the experiment may cause physical harm, it is the only possible way to obtain the data. In this case, we may not have been able to use the results of the Willowbrook experiment, as it is possible that it could have been obtained using other, less harmful methods. Whether or not we should use the results of unethical experiments is a complicated question that begs discussion. However, before we go too far, we should remember that this discussion is tainted with the knowledge of the Nazi experiments. As such, it may be useful to look at society's view of unethical experiments before the Nazis. According to Jonathan Seinberg, human subjects came to be known as the animal of necessity. Human experimentation was something that was unpopular, but then because it was needed. While I don't propose that we encourage a resurgence of unethical experimentation, I feel we should look at using the results of the experiments that do occur as unfortunate, but necessary. Of course, I'm not the only one to make this decision, so what are your thoughts on the matter? Should we use the results of unethical experiments, or not?